Blaise Pascal has written about this, and I, I get from what I've read uh, of you that maybe you, you're a fan of yes, Blaise I, Pascal. Yes, oh, I, oh, I think Pascal was incredible, yes. And he lived in a very skeptical age. Yes. Was a contemporary Dave, of Descartes. Right, and uh, a, a culture of libertinism that sought uh, pleasure and hedonism. And so Pascal wanted to get people to think about the human predicament. If there is no God, what are the consequences for human being? And if there is a God, what difference does it make? And I think he's, he's just masterful mm. in laying out the human predicament. And if any of your listeners haven't read Pascal's Pensee, yeah. Pensee, the thoughts, I would really encourage them to do so. It's an easy read, very entertaining, mm -hmm. and very thought-provoking. It's good if you have ADD, too, because it's just short little <laughs> clips that you yeah. can make your way through. Yeah, if, for readers or listeners who aren't familiar with the work, what this is is an assemblage of notes that Pascal left at his death, unassembled, unordered, just like a, a, a shoebox full of notes, mm. and scholars have numbered these and put them into a sort of logical order that they think might have been the order that Pascal was thinking for. But as a result, you just have these pithy mm -hmm. little thoughts that very are good, oh, they? so stimulating. Now, I think that Pascal's wager often doesn't get a very fair shake. I think that if there's people out there watching perhaps now, and the two live options on the table are atheism and Christian theism. And they might be, they might want to say, well, maybe agnosticism is just the most respectable decision because at the end of the day, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm just going to remain on the fence. What would you say to someone like well, that? Well, I think when you're down to atheism versus Christian theism is your alternative, mm -hmm. then Pascal's wager really goes through. And, and that wager is that um, if you believe and you're right, you, ha you gain infinity. Uh, whereas if you believe in you're wrong, you've just lost. You'll never know. Either. Well, you'll never know, and all you've lost is the pleasures of sin in, in this lifetime. Whereas on the atheistic view, if you're wrong, you suffer infinite loss, separation from God. Whereas if you're right as an atheist, all you've gained is the pleasures of sin for this brief lifetime. And so Pascal is quite right in saying if you do a cost-benefit an analysis, if the evidence is equal now, that, that's the, the key here, that the evidence can't incline either way. If the evidence is 50-50, then he says a cost-benefit of ana analysis says you should believe. And I think that's right. Well, suppose somebody hears that and they agree with you, but they just don't know how to make themselves believe. It feels like they're being hypocrites or something. Yes. Uh, or fake, phonies. Pascal addresses did, that yeah. issue, and he says what you should begin to do is immerse yourself in the Christian community. Start going to church, participating in the services, prayer. I would add things like Bible reading, mm -hmm. Christian fellowship, um, and God will work a change in your heart through these spiritual practices that can help to bring you to belief. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you will absolutely love the full interview. So click right there to enjoy the whole thing. Also, a big thanks to these groups who made that interview possible. Learn more in the show notes below about these guys. They're absolutely incredible and honored to have them as sponsors. Oh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe and then that bell button. That way YouTube will be forced to let you know when we put out more content.